Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Christopher Philip Pre, a senior student under the Department of Political Science in the University of Santa Tomas. We are located in Manila, Philippines. Before everything else, I would like to recognize my colleagues, Ms. Robin Bernisco, Ms. Casey Ann Pauline Crisologo, and Ms. Patricia Ann Tamayo. For today, I will be presenting to you our work entitled A Paradigm Shift on the Educational Pedagogy of the USD Department of Political Science, Maintaining Quality Experiential Education Amidst the Pandemic. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I will now be proceeding with my discussion. First and foremost, we are going to ponder upon the traditional implementation of the new practicum course carried out by the department, the traditional practicum course carried out by the department. In essence, the practicum course is a prerequisite to be met by senior students in order to earn their bachelor's degree in political science. As per the guidelines that are stipulated in the rules and regulations of the traditional implementation of the practicum course, senior students are required to apply as interns to partner institutions of their choice. When we say partner institutions, ladies and gentlemen, these are composed solely by government and non-government institutions. Moreover, the students are given two months to find a partner institution wherein they will be serving as interns. And as part of said allotted time, senior students are also required to attend to the orientations, which would be taken care of by those chosen partner institutions. In this portion, I would like to point out that these orientations mainly consist of the do's and don'ts inside the workplace. As we can see, these are just mere protocols that the student interns need to follow throughout their practicum experience. Going back, throughout the duration of the traditional practicum course, student interns are required to finish 200 hours of internship to their chosen partner institutions. And more often than not, senior political science students choose to work as interns to centralized government units, such as the Office of the President, the Senate, and even the Congress. As we can see, ladies and gentlemen, these are government units that all, can already function properly on their own. And they are solely located in metropolitan Manila. These are located in urban areas. The rationale behind such is anchored on the matters of accessibility accessibility for both the students and accessibility for the faculty supervisors and for the faculty supervisors. From time to time, they conduct on-site monitoring to, or in order to assess the quality of the student's output in respect to the tasks that are given to them. All things considered, the strength of the traditional implementation of the practicum course leans on hands-on approach, approach in order to enable quality experiential education. Continuing my discussion, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about education, this is how we perceive it to be in our heads. Inside the four corners of the classroom, applying the Socratic method in order to draw out theories, ideas, and discussions from various subject matters at hand. But we cannot deny the fact that this is also education. In nature, this is experiential education when students apply theories and ideologies that were instilled inside the classroom into practice to various real life situations. Again, this is where the strength of the traditional implementation of the practicum course resided through its hands-on approach to deliver experiential education to its students in the past. All was well, but then as we all know for this year, the pandemic emerged and COVID-19 affected various sectors of life, one of which is in the educational sector of various countries. And we need to ask ourselves, what does this entail? This entails social barriers to prevent the spread of the virus in which the traditional face-to-face -face education was put into a halt. Considering all those things, educational sectors on an international level resorted to distance learning. Putting such idea into the context of this presentation, it begs the question, ladies and gentlemen, how can we preserve hands-on training during the pandemic? And, and to answer that question, the Department of Political Science has laid down four key objectives that are to be met after the implementation of the new practicum course. The first one is to continue experiential education in a new medium. The second would be at the end of the course, the department would like to equip the students with all the necessary skills that are needed for a future practice of the profession. In this, in this case, this is political science. 
And the third one is to increase the faculty profile of the department. And lastly, to create linkages with our alumni. And all of these things can be done through the utilization of online platforms. And ladies and gentlemen, I will now be proceeding to the transition to a new practicum course, basically the pedagogical paradigm shift of the Department of Political Science. And the new implementation of the practicum course, senior students would utilize another separate subject in order to prepare themselves for their practicum. This is through utilizing the seminar course as a preparatory subject for the practicum of the students. And the duration of such is done under a month for this year. We have managed to implement the whole seminar course during the month of September which was divided into four weeks, which were constituted by four webinar workshops that taught students how to do policy research, how to do policy assessments, how to do position papers, and how to do project proposals. To further give you ideas on how the department implemented such course, the senior class of 2021 is composed of 31 students, which the course instructor has divided into three groups. After said division, the members of the group would delegate one member as their team manager. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to point out that the team manager is vital in implementing the new practicum course for he or she would be in charge of coordinating and communicating with the course instructor, the client, the, the mentors, and the group members themselves as regards, regards to the dele delegation of assigned tasks to them. For the mentors, these would be faculty members of the coming from the Department of Political Science, which would aid the students undergoing internship in respect to their field of expertise. And once the students have accomplished the seminar course for this year, this was around the last week of September or the first week of October, they would then be proceeding with the KYC portion or the knowing your client portion of the new practicum course wherein they will facilitate, the students will facilitate, facilitate an interview with their assigned client by the course facilitator in order to draw out the client's background along with their admin, administrative advocacies, intentions, and plans as regards to their locality. This procedure is important due to the fact that the students would good, get a good glimpse on what kind of tasks that they would be doing all throughout their practicum course. <laughs> As per the clients, these would be alumni of the department who have managed to become public officials of various LGUs or local government units here in the Philippines. And for this year, we have managed to cater to, the, to a barangay captain in Bataan, a councillor in Marinduque, and a mayor in Masbate. As we can see, ladies and gentlemen, Bataan, Marinduque, and Masbate are LGUs located in rural areas in the Philippines. Uh, at the time of the traditional implementation of the practicum course, these things were unthinkable due to the accessibility issues for both students and course supervisors. But again, these are things of the past for in the new practicum course, this is, the, these issues have been eliminated and become, become possible already due to technology. To further give you ideas, ladies and gentlemen, I would now be presenting to you the outcome of our practicum course. For the, for the students assigned in Bataan, for the group assigned in Bataan, they were successful in creating course outlines pertaining to the mandatory basic citizenship course, uh, optional responsible citizenship course, and successful policy revisions in their locality. They also managed to craft technical reports in these various sectors. And despite the reality of distance learning, students still manage to attend and be involved in barangay sessions, which are essential in terms of local community development planning. And for the group that was assigned in Marinduque, they managed to create a policy briefing pertaining to the utilization of, a, of the rapid testing in their locality, a short speech that was utilized in a municipal development council meeting, and especially this last one, a proposed bill pertaining to tax exemptions to local business owners for them to recover from the economic losses catered by the pandemic. Now, for the, 
for the group assigned in Masbate, they were successful in creating project proposals pertaining to the disaster risk reduction management amidst the pandemic. And for the other three, these are advocacies, advocacies in line with the mayor of Masbate. As you can see in their work, they have created project proposals that empowered the youth, improved the education system amidst the pandemic, and the sustainable development of the municipality of San Fernando. And for the, my preceding discussions, I will give you an actual glimpse on the outputs that we have done for this year's practicum course. This first image is the actual knowing your client interview of the group assigned in Bataan. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the course instructor here and the actual client uh, being present in the KYC procedure. For the next still is the Barangay Assembly stream that was hosted by the student in terms themselves. For the paper outputs, this one is one of the technical reports that the group has made. And this, is, this one specifically pertains to the social economic development. For the group assigned in Marinduque, this is the policy briefing regarding COVID-19 protocols. This one is the prepared speech that was utilized in the council meeting that took place in October. And this one is for the crafted ordinance regarding tax exemption for the local business owners for the first quarter of 2021. For as per the group assigned in Masbate, the, this is the proposals for risk reduction management during COVID-19. The next one, this is the project. These are the project proposals in accordance with the advocacies of the mayor of Masbate. Now, proceeding with uh, proceeding with my, uh, our my discussion, ladies and gentlemen, we will now be comparing the implementation of the traditional and new practicum course, which uh, which are separated into five clusters. The first one, skills and objectives during the traditional practicum course. Um, these are not assured and vague for the outcomes are dependent on the tasks assigned by the chosen partner institution. As per the new practicum course, the skills and objectives are assured and specific because before the students take part in the practicum course itself, they are already primed by the seminar course that I have discussed earlier. Um, as per the status of acceptance during the traditional practicum course, um, these are not assured for after the students endorse themselves to their chosen institution, they will need to wait for a certain amount of time before they know if they got accepted or not. Comparing that to the new practicum course, status of acceptance is assured. Why? Because the course facilitator would be the one to delegate the, the, the client that the students would be working under. Now, for clientele, during the traditional practicum course, they would solely be composed of centralized government units and non-government organizations located in urban areas. But in the new practicum course, the clientele would vary. You can be an LGU located in either a, in an urban or rural area. So for the measurement of completion during the traditional practicum course, this was not output driven because as I have discussed earlier, this is measured by hours, 200 hours. The problem here is that I would emphasize that there is a tendency for students to be tasked by mere clerical work in which they can finish under a week or two. And the problem there is that they, they, after the students have finished the clerical work that were assigned to them, they would just be coming into their assigned workplace just to comply with the numbers of hours required to certify, required to certify their completion. But as you can see here in the new practicum course, um, me the measurement of completion for students are output driven for they are measured through the achievement of assigned tasks to them by their clients, wherein interns will not be complete as long as their clients are satisfied by the quality of their work. Lastly, for the societal impact, this is not assured during the traditional practicum course. For there, as I have said, there is a tendency for students to be tasked by mere clerical work only. And in the new practicum course, societal impact is assured, ladies and gentlemen, for 
gentlemen, for as you can see, what we have done for this year, we have managed to uh, manage to aid the various LGUs in their agendas on local community development. At the end of the day, these tax garner a social justice component into them. Now, I will now be proceeding with uh, the sustainability of this innovation in which I will be presenting this through a SWOT analysis. First of all, strengths, ease of access. Um, we, you will just be needing a reliable internet connection and a gadget in order for you to partake in the practicum course itself. For the, for the task or in line with the course and social impact, I have discussed this earlier, the experiences and sentiments due to the client being an alumni, this is actually a strength because the clients themselves are a by, or products of the Department of Political Science. So they would know how to, how to engage with the students themselves. For the weaknesses, slow internet connection. This is actually pertaining to virtual accessibility issues. And we need to consider that scheduling Scheduling is important to consider in this platform because there may be times that students and clients may be busy on their own agendas in life and there might be issues on communication. There might be a lapse or whatsoever that can happen. Opportunities, as long as the first one, as long as this kind of practicum course is preserved, there will be a larger clientele that are to be catered to by the, by the students. And second one, the Political Science Policy Center its establishment. This is to be envisioned as a student-run policy center, which would be supervised by the faculty members of the Department of Political Science that would cater to the needs of various LGUs here in the Philippines. And uh, lastly, this one for opportunity support of administrators. Fortunately, this kind of implementation amidst the pandemic is actually supported by our administrators for the threats, total loss of internet connection. This is akin to what I have said, virtual accessibility. Um, for the impact on social communication skills, we cannot deny the fact that socialization is still different when we are face to face with someone. And change of practicum coordinator. This is actually the biggest threat that we can see right now because in the event that the coordinator is changed, there is a possibility possibility that this kind of implementation would not be followed. And for the support of faculty members, well, in the role of faculty members as mentors, they would not be paid, but, and for aiding the students with their expertise would stem from the kindness of their hearts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in summation, we would now be revisiting the four key objectives that are, that are to be accomplished by the department at the end of the new practicum course. The first one has been, has been possible through utilization of STEAM services such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and the utilization of electronic emails. The second one has been possible through the students' participation in the seminar workshops and the whole practicum experience itself. The third one is, has been possible through involving faculty members of political science as mentors to students undergoing practicum. And last one, the, the creating linkages with our alum alumni. Uh, this one is uh, the practicum course would aid alumni who have managed to secure government positions in the Philippines. All things considered, ladies and gentlemen, we can see that the Department of Political Science has managed to preserve quality experiential education amidst the pandemic, which is possible through online education. So before I end my presentation, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to lay down my parting words with you. COVID-19 is not the cause to change our educational paradigm, but it merely hastened its implementation. Once again, this is Christopher Philip Pre, representing the Department of Political Science in the University of Santa Tomas. Mabuhay, and thank you for listening. Uh, so, thank you for your presentation. Uh, are there any questions from the floor? Yes, I, I'm open for questions right now, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
Um, if not, then may I ask a quick question? Uh, what yes, are the most uh, challenging part for your uh, model? Well, the most challenging part, ma'am, was uh, actually, Anne, to be really honest, it, Anne, it's about balancing the or academic uh, or academic agendas because we cannot deny the fact that uh, during this semester we still have other major and minor subjects to attend to, but uh, that's that's the most challenging for uh, for the implementation of this new practicum course, but. Again, this is very supplemental for us for we have the opportunity to practice our ideologies into actual real life situations. So I hope that can suffice as an answer to your question, ma'am. Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation and your sharing.